God bless you. So we're going to go into Second Chronicles, and we're going to go directly to chapter thirty-three, and we're going to re read about King Manasseh and about all the wicked things he's done. And we're also going to go into his repentance. And we're going to learn that no one is beyond redemption. So, if you'd like to read with me from chapter 33 of Second Chronicles. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 50 years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places, which Hezekiah his father had broken down. He raised up altars for the Baals, and made wooden images, and he worshipped all the host of heavens. And he served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said in Jerusalem shall my name be for ever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Also he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft and sorcery, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord. To provoke him to anger, he even set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land which I have appointed for your fathers only if they are merciful sorry only if they are careful to do all that I have commanded them according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses so Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the kings of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze fetters, and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord, his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed to him and he received his entreaty heard his supplication and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God after this he built a wall outside the city of David on the west side of Gion in the valley as far as the entrance of the fish gate and it enclosed a fell and he raised it to a very great height then he put military captains in all the fortified cities of judah he took away the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the lord and in jerusalem and he cast them out of the city he also repaired the altar of the Lord, sacrificed peace offerings and thanks offerings on it, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed on the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh is prayer to, to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Indeed, they are written in the books of the kings of Israel. Also his prayer and how God received his entreaty. 
and all his sin and trespass and the sites where he built high places and set up wooden images and carved images before he was humbled. Indeed, they are written among the sayings of Hosai. So Manasseh rested with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. Then his son Ammon reigned in his place. So, we are learning about Manasseh. And you see here that he worshipped other gods. Things that God had given to Israel, and they put all to the curse of destruction, that none would exist. And you see that he brought up worship to Baal. He brought up wooden images and carvings. He worshipped and served those, and he put his own through the fire. And you see that he was a man of witchcraft, soothsaying and sorcery, mediums and spiritists. And that he did much evil in the sight of God. So does this sound like someone that is good or someone that is bad in the eyes of the Lord? And he did all these terrible things and he seduced the people of God to do wrong, to sin and to follow away from the teachings of God. And it says that the Lord spoke to him and his people but they would not listen because they did not listen God sent a king against them of Assyria and he took him in fetters and with hooks and you see in his affliction that Manasseh humbled himself greatly this humbling of oneself and you see that it says after he gives this prayer that God hears him and brings him back to Jerusalem for Manasseh knew that God was Lord. And from this he turns from what he'd been doing. He takes down the idols from the house of the Lord. And he takes all the altars that he'd built. And he takes them out of the city. He is on his way to putting right. What can be put right. This is repentance. And it says does he not repent and the Lord hear him. Remember none of us are too far from God. And then you have the prayer of Manasseh. Now in my 1611 King James I have the prayer of Manasseh. So we can see what he had to say. Let's see his repentance and learn together. O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and of their righteous seed, who hast made heaven and earth with all the ornament thereof, who hast bound the sea by the word of thy commandment, who hast shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all men fear and tremble before thy power, for the majesty of thy glory cannot be borne, and thine angry threatening towards sinners is impotable. But thy merciful promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable, for thou art the most high Lord of great compassion, long-suffering, very merciful, and repentance of the evils of men. Thou, O Lord, according to thy great goodness, hast promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee. And of thine infinite mercies hast appointed repentance unto sinners, that they may be saved. Thou therefore, O Lord, that art the God of the just, hast not appointed repentance to the just, as to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee, but thou hast appointed repentance unto me that am a sinner, for I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. My transgressions, O Lord, are multiplied. My tr transgressions are multiplied, and I am not worthy to behold and to see the height of heaven. For the multitude of mine iniquities, I am bowed down with many iron bands, that I cannot lift up mine head. Neither have any release, for I have provoked thy wrath and done evil 
before thee. I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. I have set up abominations, and have multiplied offences. Now therefore I bow the knee of mine heart, beseeching thee of grace. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I acknowledge mine iniquities. Wherefore I humbly beseech thee, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me for ever, by reserving evil for me. Neither condemn me to the lower parts of the earth. For thou art the God, even the God of them that repent. And in me thou wilt show all thy goodness, for thou wilt save me. That am one worthy, according to thy great mercy. Therefore I will praise thee for ever, all the days of my life. For all the powers of the heavens do praise thee, and thine is the glory for ever and ever. Amen. God heard his prayer, and we have seen that this man did many terrible things that were evil in the eyes of the Lord. He came to repentance and saw the error of his ways. He turned from them. And he prayed to God for forgiveness. He did not hide what he had done. He admitted to his wrongdoing and asked God to forgive him for them. He turned from that. His repentance wasn't just words. It was in his heart and his deeds showed them. He took down the altars. He took down the idols. He stopped the worship of these things. No more would they pass through the fire. No more would they do these things. God heard his cry, his plea, his prayer. And he turned from his ways. No one is too far from God to come to repentance. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No matter how far beyond we feel we may be. Call on the Lord and repent truly. Turn from the wicked ways of the world. Set your heart on God's kingdom. His will be done. Pray in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He will deliver you, guide you and strengthen you. For look, I will praise thee forever all the days of my life. For all the powers of the heavens do praise thee. And thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise be unto the Lord. Trust in God to deliver you. Praise him for his mercy, his love, his grace upon you, his forgiveness. For we have all done things that are bad in the eyes of the Lord. Who is without blame? And it is in repentance and in that change, focusing on God and his glory, his will be done, not mine. That we serve the Lord faithfully, lovingly, peaceably. As Jesus taught us to love everyone as ourselves. And the first and foremost commandment is to love God above all. All your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your being. And the second like it, to love your neighbour as yourself. We are all together as neighbours. None can be held without. To love absolutely everyone. To live in forgiveness. For as he forgave us our trespasses. Don't hold anything against anyone. For we were all dead in our sins. And those that have done evil against us. Are they surely not lost? Pray for them and bless them, that the Lord can save them, that they become children of God also. No one is too far gone. Don't give up. Put your faith in the Lord and tell him all your woes, your worries, your cries and your hardships. Take your time in your private place and pray to the Lord earnestly. Put right what can be put right, what you know to be wrong, get rid of. 
Turn from it. Don't give in to it. God is there to strengthen you and to guide you. Don't be seduced by the world. I pray that you have a greater insight into A, King Manasseh and his wicked deeds and how he came to repentance, knowing how wicked these things were and understanding that no one is too far from God. He's not far from any one of us. So don't be afraid to call on him. Trust in Jesus. Call upon him to help you and guide you. Put your faith in the Lord. Pray for the Holy Spirit to work through you and strengthen you in these times. God bless everyone of you.